Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to answer some questions put to me on the YouTube. So one question I got from this guy says, I'm learning CSS and should I use CSS resets or should I just go into uh, CSS in terms of learning how each browser works? I would use CSS resets because everybody uses CSS resets. Whenever you're learning anything, you want to learn in a way that's oriented towards the real world. You want to code like people code in the real world. That's how my courses are all structured. That's how I've learned. That's how I've done everything. It comes from my business experience. It comes from my martial arts experience. When I want to learn how to fight, I would just fight. Now, in boxing, for example, a lot of people do pad work. So some guy holds up, or a girl holds up the pads, and they go left, right, jab, left, you know, left, you know, they go left, right, jab, or jab, left, right, blah, blah, blah. And they just do pads and pads and pads, or they do a heavy bag and they skip rope, and they do all these exercises, but they never get down to the actual fighting. I've seen that for, for the longest time. I remember when I was, how old was I? Maybe 16 or 17, something like that. And I first decided to get into boxing. I had been done, doing martial arts for quite a while at this point. And a friend of mine had joined a boxing school. I was like 18. And... Uh, so a friend of mine went to a boxing school, so I, he had been going for months, so I said, oh, I'm going to join you in boxing finally. So I went to the boxing school, and I walked in, and I saw my friend, I said, oh, what do you do? He showed me his routine. I said, well, how often do you spar? He goes, I haven't sparred yet. Well, how long have you been here? Well, I don't know, six months. I said, why haven't you sparred? He goes, well, I don't know, I'm not feeling ready. So I said, Phew. so first day I went in, I went into the ring with the head coach, and I sparred. I took a major beating. It was unbelievable. And, uh, but... That was it. When I would go into the ring, hitting pads and bags, all those little exercises that are supposed to prepare you for actual sparring, I feel there's uh, people spend too much time hiding in the exercises. It's like when people go to these uh, training sites for code and they just do these little, little training, you know, write one line of code or two lines of code to move a character or something like that. That's, that's really not something you should hide it. That type of little thing where you're writing snippets of code should only be in the very beginning. What you should be doing is actually writing real code, building things right away. Same thing, when I started to actually learn how to box, I got in there and I just started sparring the first day. Now, don't get me wrong, I was sparring with the coach and while we were sparring, we're doing our things, and boom, 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 boom. And he would say, no, 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 you got to put your hand here. you got to do this. you got to do that. you got to do this. And so I was learning as we were sparring, but a lot of sparring because that's what you do. We were there to learn how to box. Now, if I wanted to be a professional pad hitter, I would just do the pads. But I didn't want to be a professional pad hitter. I want to be somebody who could box. So I just got in the ring and started fighting. With coding as well, once you get your basic fundamentals, you should just be in there, you should be writing code. So back to his question, should you use CSS resets? CSS resets are just code that you use to reset the browsers so that they, are, they all have the same baseline. What does that mean in non-nerd? See, I'm not sure how this today, but traditionally, going back just even a few years, browsers would have different default settings for things, margins and padding in particular. Uh, one browser would have zero margins, one browser by default would have one pixel margins. Now, if you don't know what this is, just do a CSS course, you know what this is. Now, margins and padding for traditional layout, traditional CSS layout, very important. And uh, you have to be pixel perfect with your layouts so that they don't get messed up. Yeah, literally you're counting pixels. It sounds worse than it is actually not too bad once you know what you're doing. It's not that difficult. But if you have one browser that's off by one pixel and then you're in another browser, so IE has one pixel, you know, adds a pixel here and Firefox doesn't or Chrome does, it could screw up your layout. So what people would do is they would have this uh, default CSS code using the star selector in CSS. It's kind of the universal selector. If you don't know what this is, don't worry, just do some CSS. Anyway, they would basically write a little bit of code very quickly so that all the browsers basically started off at the same level, same margin, same padding, and saved you a lot of headaches. So if I understand this guy's question, he says, should I use a CSS reset or should I just learn what each browser does? No, just use a CSS reset because the fact that the browsers are not playing even is just 
you can almost think of it as a bug in the browser. So you don't need to learn all the stupid bugs because browsers, new versions, they get patched and you know, who cares what IE9 does or what Chrome 56 does, right? Who cares? Just reset. So you play on even playing line, uh, baseline rather, and away you go. Remember, with coding, you have to commit some things to memory, but at the end of the day, as you become more and more advanced, you're going to forget all the details. There's no question. You're going to forget all kinds of details. I literally have forgotten much more than I remember today about programming and coding. And in fact, sometimes I'll forget basics. Like, how do you do that again in CSS? And but it's no big deal because I know my foundation. I know my core. And I just go to Google and I go boom, boom, boom. And I get the answer in two seconds. And there it is. Boom. So in the beginning, yes, you have to learn the syntax. You have to, the syntax is a nerd word for the actual code that you write. But as you become more advanced, it doesn't matter. It's like it's the principles that matter. It's architecture that matters. It's good coding pra practices that matter. You know, this, the, the specifics about, you know, whether you have to, how do you access a, 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 a node within the DOM? I forget the code off the top of my head right now. Even though I've done courses on it and I've written so many, so much code, I just forget. Because why? Because I haven't done it recently. It doesn't matter. You just go and you just Google it up and there you go. That's all it is to it. So let me end this video and say, uh, when you're learning how to code, you start with your core and your foundation. Good course does that. That's what my course does. I fill that, that gap, but you can do whatever course you want. After that, there's two sites I recommend it for general web stack programming and general programming in general. Well, first of all, if you've got questions that are very specific, uh, first place I would go would be Stack Overflow. It's like a huge repo of information. Check that out. You can get some very specific answers. They're voted up. It's a great site for that. And that would be the first place I go if you've got very specific questions in terms of when you're building a project. If you have, um, if you want to learn something new about HTML or CSS or Bootstrap or Angular or whatever, then I would go to the W3 schools. They have a bunch of tutorials there. are fantastic if you know your foundation and core. Just go there, boom, 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 the answers is concise, you can test the code, you can check it out. It's great, it's better than so many commercial projects that are out there. That's where I would recommend, once you know your basic. If you don't know anything, it's not gonna be good for you. You're gonna be, oh, what is this? That's where my courses come in. So those are the two places I would go on a day-to-day -day basis as a professional developer for the web stack. If you're doing uh, Python, I just use the Python docs. The Python docs are well organized and so on. Again, once you know your basic Python, if you want to learn how to do this or that and the other thing in Python, you go boom, 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 and it's right there. Again, Google's your friend or you can go specific to one of these sites. Same thing with PHP. If you uh, forget how to do something in PHP, just go to php.net, boom, 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 it's all there with examples, pretty good. So there you have it.